Welcome back. And unfortunately, I think this is going to be the last in the build series videos for the Defender. So it's a bit of a sad week or episode, should I say. Uh, but um, we're going to go pick up the, the solar rack today and the jerry can holder and bits like that so we can get that finished and get the electrics finished. Jess is going to make loads of storage bits and things like that. And since I left you last, I've done a few other bits as well. So let me show you them. So I've mounted a compressor under the driver's seat, as you can see. So it's not an ARB compressor, it's just, um, uh, I wouldn't say a cheap one, we got it from Australia, but uh, 160 litres a minute and, what else does it say, 150 PSI as well. So it's a reasonable one. And then I've just mounted that output for the airline there. And then I've just got it on here on the switch there to turn it on and off. And I've also isolated on the isolo valve for the, for the winch. So you can't just flick that switch and have the compressor going, you've got to turn the isolator on as well. So the, the hose I've got reaches all four tyres from here, so that come out pretty well. Next job I've done, we have running water. So I'm really happy with the pressure we've got as well, because when we were buying the UV filter and the, the million micron filter, they were saying that you might lose a bit of pressure but I'm really happy with what we've got there. The other thing is as well, a lot of people say about using 15 mil pipe, you lose a lot of pressure with that. Well, I've got 15 mil JG speed fit on the outside, coming to eight mil on the inside. And like I say, we've still got that decent pressure. Uh, I'll show you the shower as well. Look at that, well happy with that. I can not wash all I want with that. And then I've got a waste tank waste valve all wired up. So as you can see, I've just got the, wired uh, the waste valve switch there. And if I just press it, and then it just dumps all the water. And then, press her again. And up she stops. And the last half a job I've done is change the gas struts on the roof. Because we fitted the roof rack, it's made it that little bit harder to lift up because you're obviously adding that extra weight. And because we're putting the solar panels on and the surfboards and everything like that, it, yeah, we needed to upgrade the springs anyway. So I've got four springs, uh, but there's a bit of conflict with information because one company says just change two, another company says change all six. So we've gone for four and we might change the back two helper struts once we've got everything on and seen what, what it's like. So, But well, I've done one side and it was an absolute nightmare. You've got to get a ratchet strap and compress the, the struts to get them on. And yeah, like I say, <laughs> nightmare of a job, but I think I've come up with a brilliant idea of how to get them on. So let me show you that. So yeah, like I was saying, what you've got to do is you've got to wrap, it, wrap a ratchet strap around it and then compress the ratchet strap to pull the strut down because the struts are too long. So what I've come up with is a little idea like this. So when you try to ratchet strap it up, what happens is it pierces a hole in the strap. So then I try and go with a thicker strap and then it covers the ball on the end to pop it on. And it's just a bit of a pain. I got there in the end, but it was just a big struggle. So what I've come up with is this little idea here. And you might recognize this because it's your jack handle <laughs> for your jack. But uh, all I've done is I've cut a little slot in the end of it, if you can see. And then what happens is that slots in into the ball there. So when you're strapping it, it goes round the circumference of the bar as, rather than digging in. So it will just spin round it. So hopefully this will do anyway. So we'll give it a go. That's the problem, look. That's how long it is. And it needs to go in there. Happy day, she's on look. So that one's not too bad, the big one, but that one there, because it, like, like you can see here, look, it has to compress so much into the strut. Like you pretty much have to compress it nearly all the way. Whereas that one obviously has only got a little bit to compress. So yeah, that one you might get away with the strap, but if you're doing that one, I'd definitely recommend making that little tool anyway. And if you're wondering where the slacker is, let me show you, let me show you what she does. No, I caught her, look, on the phone. You, you set me up. Nobody cares. You know I'm doing things. Oh, you cheat. Nobody cares. Up. We're coming to you live. First time from the landing. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we have good news. We surely do. Just been to the Weybridge and weighed the old girl, but we didn't film doing it because we were really <laughs> bricking it about it. But we come in at 2.6, so really happy with that. And this vehicle is a 3,050 kilo vehicle. So I know you can get them upgraded to three and a half tons. And this has got the heavy duty suspension and everything like that. So it shouldn't have been a big deal. No, but, but um, it's just always nice to be under really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and you're going to be more fuel efficient, that's for yeah. sure. And that's with a full tank of fuel, uh, and that's with the extended fuel tank as well, and a full tank of water at 50 mm -hmm. litres as well. So. so, and I stood on the scales and like weighed everything else that we're going to put on it. So including like the roof rack that we're going to pick up, an extra full tank of gas that's going to go on the roof, um, and two full jerry cans of water on the side, we're still going to have a payload of 350 kilos. So you have to take John and I off of that, obviously, but that still leaves us about 220 kilos for food and a bit of clothes. As you saw, we've got the roof rack and the jerry can holders on at the powder coaters and they've traveled home perfectly fine, no squeaks and creaks, so that's always a win. Now we're on with getting the solar panels on and wired up and also we've got the new boxes that John was talking about the other day. So I'll show you those. They're called Plano boxes. Um, they are quite reasonably priced and we saw quite a few people say they use them for overlanding. So we'll give them a crack and see how they go. We've also got to get on the Max tracks and the gas bottle on the roof, the spare gas bottle, and just put the jerry can holders in. But John's promised me a curry tonight. So let's get this done. Well, she's all on and I tell you what I'm over the moon with how it's come out I was a bit dubious about it to be honest I didn't really like the height of it um, but now it's all on and in place like I don't think it's bad at all really I really say I really do like it so you see I put the the bar at the front there so the surfboards don't come out uh, and also when you lift the cab they don't come out I've got to get strapped for the gas bottle because that's just an old one but the gas bottle is all mounted right at the front there and um, one ten camper, don't judge me for the for the trunk in anyway, I've done as best a job as I can anyway, but got the boxes on there, jerry cans on, waiting for the straps for them as well. And then you can see there, that's where I've got the little flap that uh, opens up for the surfboards at the back there, and then they just slide in. So yeah, over the moon with that anyway. So yeah, but anyways, we've got to call it a night tonight anyway, because uh, we're going to get curry. See you in the morning. She's not happy. A terrible tragedy occurred last night and I'm still reveling from it. I can't... Just tell them. I can't bring myself to talk about Just it. Just tell them. Did Curry take away? Didn't answer the phone. You should have seen her face. She was like, ring, ring. She had, how many times did you ring them? About 35. So, and I'm not exaggerating. And I'll tell you what, it's a good job there's not smell-o-vision because her breath stinks today after yeah, that kebab. Yeah, we had to get kebabs from town and... They were not good. Anyway, tell the people what you're doing today, Jess. Uh, today, I've got my trusty old steed back out. Yeah, so we've got this um, fabric. Show them the fabric, Jess. Show them the, the fabric. fabric. Um, it's heavy duty. I don't know how well it's going to show it, but it's black. But it's heavy duty, like canvasy kind of material. And I'm going to make a bunch of covers out of it. So I'm going to make a thing that goes over the back window inside that we're going to slot like cutlery and stuff into. I'm gonna make gas bottle covers and I'm gonna make a little like boot to go over the high lift jack so when we go through muddy things it doesn't get all clogged up and rot. So whilst Jess is doing the sewing, I forgot to tell you a few things yesterday about the roof struts. So the roof rack only weighs 40 kilos and I was amazed at how much it changed the lifting of the roof. So if you're putting a roof rack on or any weight, I definitely recommend changing at least one of the struts anyway, probably the main strut. If you 
putting a lot of weight up there like we are, change your six because even though now it lifts up all right, when you close it, these helper springs at the back pretty much don't do anything. So we're going to get them to as well and replace them. Uh, and on that, I have to say a massive shout out to Kyla, Russ and Gary as well, because all three of them have been a massive help in changing these struts, because I went to an Alucab dealer and they were going to charge me 300 quid for all the struts, whereas I've got them at 30 quid each now. So massive savings. So thanks very much for the help. And another thing I forgot to tell you as well is the amount of materials we use for wood on the build. So we've used four sheets of ply and one sheet of six mil ply as well. So if you're doing a build, that's what I'd recommend. But my job for today is I've got to get on with some boxes. So Jess has already done one. So this one here, it's just a six mil box and we're going to have it go in there and then that one's going to slide down the bottom there. And then we're going to have another one in there and then we're also going to have one in there as well so i'm going to get on with them So the boxes are done and they've been through the paint shop. I painted them so they're not that good because <laughs> Jess is busy. But I've got one coat on so I've just got to get another coat on them. So talking to Slackers, let's go see what she's been up to. Slacker. By slacker he means worker. I reckon I might be Cinderella, you know. Is it Cinderella that's the old Get on with it. <laughs> so I've made a bunch of these pockets up. Um, this fabric, absolutely buzzing with how good it is. I'll put a link in the description. 40 quid from Amazon, five meters by one and a half meters. So you've got tons to do all kinds of bits and bobs with. But I'm just waiting for my Velcro in the mail and then we can put it on because I've only got white Velcro and that is not swish enough for us. So this folds over and it's going to screw on here and that has got our gas pipe extension hoses because in here, this is where our cooker lives like we showed you before and it's got a quick coupling at the back. I can't pull it out because my butt's in the way. And that then can connect onto here so you've got like a little pipe in here that will connect onto here. So you can use it when you're cooking outside on this table. And then there's also a longer hose in there, which again plugs in here and will extend all the way up to the top here so that you can cook like with the roof up inside as well if it was raining or something. So that's what this is for. And then yesterday we had a wonderful thing happen. <laughs> we went to vote because I wanted to make covers for my gas pot holders. I'll show you. And John didn't. Guess what? 91% of it, you agreed with me. It was nearly a whitewash, wasn't it? it? Was so thanks my fans out there. <laughs> so we've got these covers made for the gas bottles. So there's much less blue. We've left the top clear though, or not covered, because that way if there was, someone made a really good point, if there was an accident, the emergency services can see that they're gas bottles. So we've left them gas bottle shape, but just got rid of some of the scratchy, scratched up yep. blue bits. Thanks for that, Gary. <laughs> yep, thanks, Gather. Uh, and then I've also made down here, look, I've made a boot for the high lift. Wait there, wait there. I think just, again, pat on the back ah. here, folks. This, I'm impressed with these. Thanks, sugar tits. Look at this look. Right, so we've got the little zip there, and then this just slides off. So it'll stop this getting all manked up and grimy. Show and them whatever. that again. Show them that again. <laughs> I'm impressed to seeing this every <laughs> this time. Look. Watch this. Ever. Look so at this. This just zips up. Oh. Look at that. Look. And again, Jess, and again. <laughs> Such a loser. I'll tell you what, we might have to get that wig out again mm. later oh, on. Oh, a treat. <laughs> wow, I have been a good girl. Um, okay, and then this is, we've told you before, we want to put some storage over this. So, I've made this up, um, which is just a piece, and then this bit round the edge here, got a trick for you, that is the extras from the ratchet straps. From yeah, when I fitted these ratchet straps, straps, they're like six metres long, so I just cut it off, so obviously it's like nice and no extra yeah. strap hanging off. So extra strong, and I didn't have to buy webbing, because you know us, we're tight off. So, this is going to fit on here, John's going to pop rivet it on, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get all of our stuff out that's going to go in the van, figure out the places for it, and then I'm going to make purpose kind of, what's the word when you make something like custom, custom made, that's it, custom made pockets for all the little things that we want to store on here. So let's get all the stuff out and figure it out, eh? So this 
is all our stuff. Well, minus food and clothes anyway. And if there's one thing I'd recommend after doing this, even if you're not getting a new camper, with your camper, take all the stuff out and see if you actually use it, because I can't believe how much stuff we've got rid of. I reckon this is half what we used to have in our other van. So, we've got to find homes for all of this, and that's Dell for you to watch. So, ready? All done. And I'm stoked at how much space we've got left inside, but I now have a plan for my back door card. So I'll take you inside and show you that. So this is my plan for the back door card. Come and look a bit closer, John. So what I'm gonna do is make little pockets for each of these to sit into, because they're things that take up tons of space in your drawer, but if they can go on the back door card, that'd be brilliant. So stoked with that plan. We're gonna leave you there for today because it's probably gonna be a fair bit swearing doing this, I'm not gonna lie. And I don't know how long it's gonna take. So you may see me tomorrow, you may see me the next day because I have a lot of sewing to do and I don't know how fast my little fingers can go. So, see you so, tomorrow. Let's get to work on your back door, eh, Jess? Oh, Jesus wept. <laughs> Morning, everyone. And as predicted, I spent the entire day sewing yesterday, but I do think it was worth it. Check out this little beauty. So this is my little kitchen storage rack. All we've done is pop rivet it to the door and there's a metal bar at the back to support it. Been for a drive, nothing even rattles. So buzzing about that. We've got the pockets on the back because my Velcro came and the hoses are in them. So that'll be nice and easy to use. Uh, also the upgraded gas struts for the back came. So we've gone for 250 Newtons and they work a treat. So they do exactly what they're supposed to do now, which is a win. The only thing I've got left to do with my sewing, thank God, because my poor little fingers are sore, is just a curtain for the front. So I just need John to fit the curtain round for me and I can measure it all up and get that done. So whilst Jess has been on with her sewing, I've done a few tweaks because we've had quite a few suggestions and comments saying about their own ex people's own experiences when they're overlanding and that, and it's really helpful, really appreciated. So thanks very much. So I'll show you what we've done. We've got the old sticker on. So she's officially now a true blue traveller. But one of the comments was about rocks, about the fittings under the water tank and rocks flicking up and breaking them. And so what I've done is I've stuck a mud flap on the back there and a mud flap on the front there just to protect them a little bit. So thanks very much for that suggestion. And then also the gas bottle. So somebody said about if the, the ratchet worked loose, it flying off down the road. So I've just made this little bit of galvanized wire up. It's going up to a carabiner, little like breakaway cable. So thank you very much for that suggestion. And then also I've made a little bit of storage for this back door as well. We're probably going to put a few bits more bits on it as well, but I just made these bungees up. So I'll show you how I made them as well in a minute as well. And then lastly, the match traps up here as well. So all we've done is on these little um, like spin knobs, I've just put this galvanized wire with an R clip as well. So just to sort of stop them going loose. So again, I'll show you how I've made them. So this is me in my element making things like this. I love it. I make it for all sorts, like so you don't lose clips and like I say, like with this here, so you've got the pin and you don't lose this little R clip. Just brilliant. So, but to make these bungees, quite simple. So I know you've got the initial out there buying the bits first, but like I bought this reel and then I've used it for hundreds of things. So like, yeah, it's brilliant. So this is just a bit of five mil bungee cord. And then you can buy these clips here. So you can get a hundred of these off eBay for a tenner. And then they're brilliant because like I say, I'll get these little D shackles and then you could screw that into a bit of wood and then you could hook, hook them into it. And then also with these themselves, like they interlink. So there's just so many uses that you can use them for anyway. So to make the bungee, obviously measure how long you want the bungee and then go a bit shorter so you get your stretch. And then you've got to buy some of these. These are called hog rings. Uh, tie little metal clips and then some hog ring pliers as well. And then all you do is obviously you loop your uh, bungee through your cord and then you put the clip over the end of the bungee and then when you tighten it up, the hog ring just tightens up on the bungee and secures it. And yeah, you can like tie a knot in the bungee and things like that, but like that's the proper way that like bungees are done and it's so good. And then I put a bit of heat shrink over the end and then obviously when you heat it up, it goes like that, so it goes really nice. Just watch out you don't melt the nylon cable when you're doing it. Then do the same again this side, but don't forget to put your, uh, your heat shrink on first, otherwise you won't get it over. Job done. 
and then these little wire clips. So pretty much exactly the same thing. So I just buy a reel of wire, like pick what size wire you want. This is a bit of 1.5 mil galvanized wire on a reel. And then all you gotta do to make these is you just need a ferrule like this, tiny little ferrule. And then all you do is you get your bit of wire and you put your ferrule over the wire and then get your thing you want to go through, go through it and then loop round just like the bungee. And then you just crimp it up. And then same again, I like to use a bit of heat shrink over the end because like I say, these wires, they start to fray where you cut it. So you just put a bit of heat shrink over the end and I like to double it up. I put one bit of heat shrink on and then another as well because it just, it makes it a little bit thicker and to stop you pricking your fingers on the metal. And same again with this side. Then it's job done. All I've done is I've put this isolator onto the winch cable, so because obviously I'm only going to use them at the same time. So then when I clip it in there, I won't lose the isolator key. I just unclip that and then use that. And then like I say, things like that up there, so that won't come loose. And yeah, it's just all sorts of sad and strange things you'll use them for anyway. So I've got my curtain done and fitted. Uh, it's just on a 25 mil piece of black pipe from Screwfix, eight pound for the pipe. And then there's some conduit pipe clips in the corner just holding it up. And I think they were a pound for two. So that's pretty good value for me. The tie back I've just done out of the recycled ratchet strap. And it's just got a bit of Velcro on either end and we screwed it to the wall. And we've also made these little tabs here and on the toilet. So this one's to pull the bed out and this one's to lift the toilet lid. Cause we love a bit of recycling and we're cheap us. Then for the curtain, it just, oh, Velcro's open like that. And voila, got some privacy. Yeah, well, just because you're sat on that toilet, make sure you uh, don't go wetting yourself like you did oh, yesterday. Oh my God, I could have killed him. <laughs> Let me set the scene for you here. So yesterday, Jess thinks she's a comedian. On Instagram story, she puts a picture of me, not looking my finest, looking I like have to tramp. say. Because we went shopping, I told her I'm not changing out my work gear. So she took a photo of me and put it on there. So um, it was a bit of payback time, wasn't it? So he thinks it's appropriate. We walk into give it, no, not give it, go outdoors, we go into. And he walks over to the bloke. I think nothing of this at this stage because we were looking for something, right? He goes over to the bloke and he goes, excuse me, mate. Where's your toilets? She's just pissed herself. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't know where to look. The poor bloke was like, oh, what, what? He'd laughed and he's like, for real? I was like, no, not for real. <laughs> so that teaches her to put oh. pictures of me not looking my finest, because as you'll know, I normally look superb on the old You normally phone. look superb, do you? Oh. Somebody god. said to me actually, they said, Henry Cavill my ass, more like Guy Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone commented on YouTube. Well done, my friend. Yeah. Oh. So, anyways, I need to speak to you about recovery gear. So, because we're going to be taking this vehicle to Africa, we need some decent recovery gear. And I don't know anything about recovery gear, so good old Google and YouTube, and this is what I've come up with. So, we've already got the winch, and we've got the bumper with the two recovery points in it. So I've ordered two 4.75 ton D shackles to go on the front there. Then I've ordered a 12 ton snatch strap. Now, if you don't know what a snatch strap is, basically it's a strap that's got some flex in it, basically. So it flexes about 20%. So when somebody's trying to pull you out, it's not rigid. It's got a bit of flex, it acts like a bit of a spring. So it doesn't snap the strap or anything like that. So I've gone with it on them. And if you want to know what rating to go with, they reckon go with about three times the weight of your vehicle. So like I say, I've gone with a 12 ton just to be safe. And then I've got an extra strap, which can be used as an equalizer strap between the two rings in the front, uh, an extension for the winch and also a tree saver as well. Then I've got a soft shackle and a winch pulley as well. So for the front, we're pretty much sorted, hopefully. Um, and then on the rear, it's a bit trickier because obviously I've got rid of the, the tow bar, so we haven't got anything that we can mount from there. And then also the, we haven't got a NATO bar or anything like that. So all I've got is these two rings on the back, which aren't the best either, but they reckon if you swap them out for Jake rings, it's meant to be a lot better. So I'm gonna make them myself. So all it, I've got some eight and 12 mil plates. I'm just gonna do two drop down plates there bolt through the top and then a big bar at the bottom. So let's get them made. See if they fit. 
So they fit a treat. So all it is is the original bolt in the top, an 8mm plate coming down, and then a 16mm bolt at the bottom. So, well, a 60mm bit of bar, actually. So the weakest point is always going to be the bolt at the top anyway. So I'm really happy with them. So I'm just going to get them off and get them painted. So as you've all seen throughout this build, John thinks that he's a bloody comedian. And it's not just the build, it's not just pantsing me. <laughs> or scaring me. Yes! <laughs> or telling the man in the shop that I've pissed myself. Oh no, 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 no. This continues through all facets of our life and he particularly likes to do it when we travel. Just <laughs> John, it's not funny. John, seriously? Oh my God, stop that! Oh, oh. No! And normally, I just laugh it off. It's a bit of comedy, it's a bit of a giggle, it's fine. But after yesterday's incident, I've decided that he needs to cool it a bit. I'm just gonna go get the bed in out to open it in, right? Have you done that? <laughs> Have you recorded that? <laughs> That's payback, baby. <laughs> don't act like you don't deserve it. I think we got him good. You feeling fresh now, love? <laughs> I knew she was up to something because she went quiet. And normally when she goes quiet, she's either eating or sleeping. So I just assumed it was one of them. I'm no good at those kind of things. Like I've tried to get him back a couple of times. Like I tried sticking gaffer tape to his leg. He just peeled off. It was no thing. So. But I'm quite, imp I'm quite impressed actually that uh, you did that actually. So. Ah. Yeah. Well done, well done. <laughs> game on. No, no, game over. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Anyway, we just want to say thank you so much for watching because unbelievably we're at the end. Yeah. She's finished. Yeah, and we've like... It's unbelievable. The Defender community is incredible. Like, there's been so, so many. Helpful. Yeah, there's only been one knobhead that's <laughs> like been rude and telling me what I should and shouldn't do. But uh, but apart from that, yeah, like I say, so many helpful comments. Yeah, like, we're so grateful for it. We really are. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. And we can't wait to get out in there. We're going to go away this weekend. So um, not sure where yet, but uh, got to give her a bit of a test run. I'm sure there'll be things to fix after that. There might be a build fix ups video too <laughs> and then if you don't know we're also going to do another build so we're building a sprinter box van as well because we're going to take that we're taking this one to africa but we're going to take that one to like the nordics and we're going to do some real winter holidays in that so get a proper um, snowy christmas and yeah for like the christmas markets and stuff i've never like tried to ski or snowboard so i mean that would be a reason in itself to come back because my coordination for <laughs> snowboarding is going to be entertaining so it's going to be <laughs> one extreme to the other it's going from a tiny little defender to this big sprinter box fan so uh, we'll see how we get along with that anyway so. yeah but we'll have a few adventures in this one first yeah